Good morning, everybody, and welcome to this year's uh, AGM and uh, sessions today. Uh, I'm Eamon O'Rourke, uh, Chair of British Taekwondo. I've been in this role now for 18 months, and it's been an interesting and exciting time. Uh, we as a board, I believe over that period, have achieved so much. Uh, our board members are all on the Zoom today as well as uh, British Taekwondo staff and executive. Uh, you'll receive um, a lot of information today and uh, the way we would like you to uh, get involved is via the chat um, and any information, any questions that you'd like to ask, we'll be picking those up. Later in the day, uh, we'll be hosting our AGM. Uh, but first, <clears throat> uh, what a year this has been. Um, a global pandemic that has closed down much of, of the world in many respects, but certainly has closed down this country for almost half a year. Uh, and many of us have been in more severe geographic lockdown since March. Uh, this has had an incredible impact, not only on British Taekwondo, of course, but on our general lives and how we have been able to manage through this period. And we have had to find all of our resilience to get to this point, um, not only for British Taekwondo, as I say, but for your home life, uh, for your work life, uh, just to make sure that we can continue. There is, um, as we can all see, some light at the end of this tunnel. Uh, we are looking beyond Christmas into the spring with a vaccine for the virus coming through, but also with much better uh, hospital uh, medical practices that are supporting our NHS to support us. Uh, notwithstanding that, it has been a challenging period for uh, Ian and the team to work through the various COVID regulations with DCMS and Sport England and the government to make sure that we're able to return to play as soon as we possibly can. And we've had some interesting challenges we've uh, achieved a lot and we have returned to play and then we have been pushed back but I um, are thanking you for your support during this period to help us to help you and to make sure that we return safely and make sure that we get our uh, children and ourselves back into uh, returning to training as soon as we possibly can across the country. So a big, big thank you to the team who have had to wade through so much information to make sure that they advise you correctly. Uh, I'm involved in a number of governing bodies and it is really a massive challenge for different sports to react to DCMS to make sure that we're able to uh, get the right support from DCMS to Sport Hearing to allow us to continue. However, notwithstanding all of that, there has been a tremendous amount of work achieved during this year. Uh, so much of that work has been achieved by people who have been in the background getting on with it. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, that work has included uh, a lot of what you will see today uh, and I think has moved our organisation through massively and prepared us for uh, being able to return much more robustly and strongly than we have ever before. So hopefully during today you'll receive so much information that will give you confidence uh, in the way in which um, our teams have been working and, and contributed by many of yourselves to get us there. But first, uh, a bit of housekeeping, because we're on Zoom and there's a large number uh, on, on this uh, session, I'm going to ask you to make sure you use a chat function to communicate. Your questions will be picked up and we will make sure any questions or comments are included and answered through that function. So that is my introduction to this year's session and AGM. Um, I would like to start with the first session. Uh, the first session is going to uh, take us through the work we have done so far to develop a strategy for British Taekwondo, one which really hasn't been in place for many years and one which we really do need in order to make sure we can take ourselves through, get commitment from our partners and stakeholders, uh, get support from our uh, Sport England, uh, UK Sport, uh, and, and prepare ourselves for a position where we can grow the way we need to and want to over the next period. 
I'm going to go through the first few slides, but before I do that, I'd just like to introduce um, Sam Matthews. Sam Matthews has assisted us during this period. Uh, Sam has done a lot of work with UK Sport, Sport England and, gov and governing bodies of sport um, in strategic uh, management and projects. So before I go through the slides, uh, I would just like to say hello to Sam and let her introduce herself. Morning, everyone. Thanks, Eamon. Um, yes, yeah, so just briefly, I'm Sam Matthews. Um, I've worked in sport since 2002 with um, senior roles at British Cycling and UK Sport before becoming a freelance sports and events consultant. Uh, in terms of Taekwondo, I project managed the funding and bidding process for Taekwondo's major events in Manchester and London since 2017. And as part of that supported development of legacy plans associated with events in both of those cities. So I was absolutely delighted um, to get the opportunity to work with British Taekwondo to help them bring this uh, 10 year strategy that we're going to talk about just now um, for the organisation forward. So as Eamon said, he's going to kick off the presentation with the bigger picture um, and then I'll share a bit more detail on what this strategy and its objective really means to you all as clubs and coaches. Thanks, Eamon. That's great. Thanks so much, Sam. So, first of all, uh, what is a strategy? Well, the strategy is essentially uh, a big plan uh, that gives us uh, lots of um, strategic direction and allows us to look forward, perhaps as far as 10 years ahead, um, but really focusing on how we get there over the next one to three, four years. Uh, and that strategy, uh, once in place, if it's good, will support us in um, bidding for, uh, resources and uh, getting partners and, and hopefully making sure as an organization we are strong robust and we have good management practices and processes within our organization it also gives the board the opportunity to make sure that we can see ahead of us any risks and opportunities and making sure that we can support ian and his team in delivering great outcomes without a strategy without that framework it's really challenging to do that and uh, you are you tend to go off piste and you tend to lose focus so this strategy is really really important for this organization to make sure british taekwondo can keep that focus through the next period uh, especially now through uh, what is a hugely challenging year and emerging into 2021 fit for purpose and making sure that we can get the right partners to work with us so the background to the strategy has uh, has taken uh, quite a while. Uh, in December 2018, uh, we recognised the dissatisfaction amongst the membership. Uh, I wasn't in the organisation then, but I was chairing uh, World Taekwondo at that time, and I could see and understand the uh, difficulties we were all having in working together without a strategic framework. Uh, in 2019, uh, the board then laid amazing, in my view, foundations in, in bringing forward a lot of change in the organisation. Uh, new board, new CEO uh, and uh, executive with staff team appointed. And through that period, um, in January to June 2020, uh, we had an opportunity to start to invest, even though we were going through really challenging time with COVID-19 in building a volunteer department, which you'll learn more about later today. But for me, an amazing amount of work with a huge number of people committing to work within a structure to deliver great outcomes for British Taekwondo. So through July 2020, we have a renewed focus. We have the appointment of that external resource, Sam talked about, to accelerate uh, how we would develop a strategy now arguably in my view a lot of the framework was in place we were needing to bring this together into a one place so that we could understand it and that the board could start to work out what we had to do next to make sure we became that world-class organization that we want to be so <clears throat> to do that we needed a strategy uh, we worked through uh, a number of sessions as a board, we brought in external support and we started to develop what would be our 10 year vision. Within that, working through what we're here for, what is our mission, what do we want to achieve? And in order to do that, to achieve that mission, we need to determine our core objectives. All of this is enveloped really in what we believe our core values are as an organization, as a membership. And we worked hard and consulted on what we felt were the core values for British 
Taekwondo. What did we believe people should see us as? How should we behave? And how should we make sure our organization is respected, honest and transparent? So to do that, we then developed our strategies and our tactics that surrounded each of those objectives. That is a way in which we're going to achieve them over the next period, over the next 12 months to three years, uh, working with partners, recognizing opportunities, but also recognizing where our resources might come from in order to achieve those objectives. And then through October, we were looking at the key performance indicators that would achieve the strategy and deliver through those tactics. So the key performance indicators really start to take us down to the level of which we can see what we're doing in the next three months, the next 12 months, really assisting Ian and the team to make sure we have a very clear framework to work within and that we can all be measured against that performance through the board, through myself, through uh, Ian and his team, but also to make sure to, that we would attract the right partners and the right resources in order for us to deliver those objectives. And then we have taken a period of time to consult um, and ask our partners, UK Sport, GB Taekwondo, we went to local authorities, including Manchester, who are a strong partner, and we tested that strategy and we tested whether they felt it would be strong enough to support and deliver the outcomes. Now, we knew, of course, all of the external factors um, as we started this strategic development plan. Uh, but COVID has really put a spotlight on our resilience and how we can move forward and how we can come out of this stronger and better in terms of an organisation. And it just, I need to say at this stage, the support of our membership has been incredible during this period. Uh, without our membership supporting British Taekwondo, it would have been a much more challenging period. We would have been concentrating on survival, whereas actually we've been able to do quite a lot of work in the background to make sure that we are fit for purpose as we come through um, into the spring of next year. So that key stakeholder consultation gave us lots of information and allowed us to support what the delivery structure might look like. And we'll go through that through the next slides. Out of all of that led us to start to work out what our vision might be. Now working within um, the International Federation, working within the context of the UK, and um, working within our own values that we've worked through, we believe a really strong strong vision for our organisation is a world leading national and governing body for united and accessible Taekwondo. And it will unpack this vision as we go through the mission uh, and the objectives through the slides that Sam will take us through in a moment. But it's a, re a really powerful statement of intent uh, and one in which we all believe as a board and through our consultations believe is a vision which will take us forward for the next 10 years and we'll be able to use over the next period to bring forward uh, partners, resources to allow us to deliver our objectives. Out of that, we have to determine what we're here for. Um, uh, what is our mission? Um, our mission uh, is to provide innovative and inclusive engagement opportunities, which bring together and grow the Taekwondo community. This is providing an effective support to all our clubs, and enabling all of our members to reach their full potential. Now, I find that really powerful. That didn't just emerge, that was through a lot of work that was done through a number of focus groups, a number of board meetings, and a number of consultations to determine what it is we're here for. But that mission for me uh, is highlighted during this period uh, when uh, Ian and the team have been doing a, a lot of communication online, a lot of online activity and a lot of online support. The innovation I've been seeing from our, uh, from our team and from our community and from our clubs and members has been phenomenal during this period. And I think really has kept us going uh, with uh, a lot of support to keep doing some activity so that when we're ready to get back to full training, we are prepared for that. So following our mission, we're moving into our objectives. We have our values, uh, we have our vision, we have our mission in place, really, really strong statements of intent, but they don't mean things unless we can deliver the objectives of the organization through that, and then ultimately tactically start to deliver them operationally. 
So at that stage, I'm going to uh, hand over to Sam and ask Sam to take us through how we are going to utilize those, those really strong statements of intent and start to work them through the organization. Our objective here, our overall objective here is to get a series of objectives that can deliver us KPIs to allow Ian and the team, along with our community, to start to drive forward significant change into 21. 2021 and beyond uh, and then we can celebrate this uh, th th this strategy with our partners with ourselves and we can start to use it to move our organization forward so at this stage Sam if I can hand over to you and you can take us through the next stage of the strategy thank great. you great thank you Eamon uh, so as Eamon said as well please do feel free to use the chat function if there are any questions that come to mind throughout this and I, I, would, I do want my very best to answer them immediately after the presentation and if not as soon as possible after today and also feel free to use the thumbs up hopefully not thumbs down function to express your gut reaction to these strategic plans so as Eamon said, I'm focusing on the organisational objectives. So these are measurable goals which need we need in place to move us closer to delivering against that mission and vision that Eamon mapped out. And we, we when I say we, I mean the board, um, the executive team, the staff and a, and a number of engaged volunteers that supported the, the process as this strategy has been being developed. I've broken this down into six core objectives and these being to operate to the highest standard of governance, to retain and increase participation, to ensure we provide development pathways for all of our members, to develop and support clubs and coaches, to innovate and grow our organisation, and to support success on the world stage. It's right to point out from the outset that no single objective is more important than, the, than another and indeed in many ways they're all interlinked. But for each objective, I'd just like to now give you a flavour of some of the kind of key tactics to deliver against these objectives and an indication of some of the aspirational targets being set to monitor progress so that we can understand what success looks like. So firstly, operate to the highest standard of governance. This is really the brilliant basics that are required to underpin the future direction of the organisation. The ambition here is to ensure outstanding organisational and financial governance structures, ensure exceptional standards of delivery, adhere to the organisation's core values, which I'll define later and create a great place to work, a great organisation to be affiliated with, so forging strong relationships and focusing on welfare. The key target here then is to remain compliant with the highest tier of Code for Sports governance. What does that mean? Well, essentially, it's ensuring that the organisation is managed in a way which is transparent, with accountability and with financial integrity. But the tactics here to achieve this can really be grouped into three core themes leadership and management, safeguarding and welfare, and stakeholder relationships. Effective leadership is the key to success of any organisation. As mentioned previously, a new board, CEO and staff team has already been appointed, and that team continues to expand with the development of volunteer departments from whom you'll hear from after me. A resource plan is being developed to ensure that the central and regional staff required to deliver against this strategy can be appointed. Cultivating a positive working environment which provides opportunities for development, progression and new experiences is important. A happy and engaged workforce will have a significant impact on the levels of support that clubs, volunteers and members receive and will ensure that there's a real desire to achieve the ambitions of this strategy. Setting up and maintaining best practice policies and procedures is it's fundamental. Uh, there's a lot of work already going on with regards to equality and diversity, data protection, health and safety, all things that will trickle down to support clubs and coaches to operate to the highest standard. Safeguarding and protecting the welfare of all those involved in Taekwondo is really important. As many of you probably already know, a safeguarding and compliance officer was appointed in March with a focus on ensuring that all members feel safe in the environment in which they participate. 
So a suitably trained team of club welfare officers will be appointed with guidance being provided to all clubs on ensuring that standard operating procedures are followed to safeguard all participants and indeed coaches. Safeguarding will form part of the new coach education syllabus, which I'll talk a little more about later, hence ensuring that all coaches are equipped with at least the basic safeguarding knowledge. Centrally, a process is being developed to ensure that any safeguarding or child protection cases that are brought to the table are dealt with effectively and within an agreed time frame. And more generally, the people and policies are in place or being put in place to support you in this delicate area. <clears throat> Stakeholder relationships. So finally, uh, it's the development and maintenance of effective relationships with key stakeholders. So by this, I mean other public body organisations, including Sport England, Scotland, Wales and Northern Ireland, forming direct funding relationships where appropriate and supporting the uniform delivery of Taekwondo across, across the home nations. Better relationships with these bodies means better funding and access to increased resource to deliver more Taekwondo across more of the UK, which is good for us all. A close relationship with GB Taekwondo is already being forged with the CEO and Performance Pathway Manager, both having played active roles in the development of this strategy. British Taekwondo and GB Taekwondo will work hand in hand with each other to ensure mutually beneficial policies are in place, specifically with regards to performance pathways, events and profiling sport. And whilst obviously forming good relationships with numerous cities and hubs of activity is important, there's a focus on nurturing the already strong relationship with Manchester as the home of Taekwondo. They're a supporter of major events, pilot participation initiatives and a key investor into the sports high performance centre. So to be successful, we need to both retain and increase membership. And as such, this can really be viewed as perhaps the organisation's next step. The point to highlight in this ambition is that to really increase the number of people participating in Taekwondo, this needs to be addressed at all levels and across all settings. So in clubs, in the community, in schools, colleges, universities. To do this, it's essential to deliver great products, variety and excellent customer service to members and prospective members and critically support clubs and coaches to deliver high quality and diverse experiences. The primary targets here are to increase the number of BT members to at least 50,000 and the number of BT clubs to at least 1,500 by the end of this strategy. Naturally, there are annual targets that sit behind this and any other ambition we speak of today to ensure progression towards this goal and remains on track. So just thinking first about diversification. We'll ensure that we consistently recognise and serve the needs of the diverse nature of Taekwondo to ensure growth across sport, Pumse, martial arts and para-Taekwondo. Para this process has already begun through the development of specific volunteer-led technical departments for each discipline. Central to diversification will be the development and launch of tailored products for different audiences. So under 10s, general fitness, female specific, older participa participant focused programs to provide a few examples. The intention is to provide packages that you can pull off the shelf and deliver in your settings. So expanding your offering, if that's your desire, will expand the number of people your club can attract and therefore improve the sustainability and growth of it too. So alongside this product diversification will be a new tiered membership structure with different options available to suit different desires to join the organisation, including a low cost reward based package aimed specifically at younger children. This approach has been successfully implemented across a number of different sports, including cycling, swimming, triathlon, to name a few. And we really hope that it will have the same positive impact for Taekwondo. We will ensure that our website and other marketing tools reflect this diversification, making it quick and easy for existing and potential members to navigate to the information that's relevant to them and the way that they engage or want to engage with Taekwondo. 
As mentioned earlier, significant growth will realistically only be achieved through engaging with participants across multiple settings. Community engagement will be secured through the development and delivery of outreach programmes, so building on pilot schemes delivered in Manchester and London by, and supporting the delivery of community-based products alongside other local authorities. The intention here is to develop outreach programmes centrally, targeting things like physical and mental well-being, self-defence, postnatal, tackling inactivity, building confidence, so essentially a softer version of Taekwondo. Um, for which tuition materials, tips, timelines, etc., can be provided to coaches to use in your communities. We will also develop and launch a comprehensive disability engagement programme for people with physical or mental impairments. So centrally developing a specific six to 10 week outreach training modules, identifying relevant community groups and partnering with local coaches to provide adaptive activities across a number of different groups and focusing on a range of physical and mental needs. The third specific target is primary, secondary and higher education settings. We'll develop a pathway programme which ensures that the next step for progression is always evident and available, preventing children and young adults from dropping out and becoming inactive or maybe moving to another sport. To attract and retain new members and clubs, British Taekwondo's customer service must be exceptional. We'll put in place fantastic member benefits, ensuring that these are well communicated. The aim to grow the number of clubs can be achieved by ensuring that affiliation to BT is more attractive an option than affiliation to any of our competitors. This means ensuring great club affiliation benefits, a well thought through and transparent fee structure, and excellent levels of support to you, the club coaches. There's a commitment to engage regularly with members, just more generally to ensure customer satisfaction and continued improvement. And it's consistently recognised that club coaches are the people on the ground who can help drive the organisation's growth. And so British Taekwondo will ensure that the appropriate support and incentives are in place to encourage all clubs to sign up and retain members. So this strategy recognises the importance of being on a journey with milestones to achieve along the way. And this next objective focuses on providing development pathways for all members. The ambition is for British Taekwondo to ensure that there is a clear pathway model in place, which guides individual development of all members, regardless of where they are on their Taekwondo journey and regardless of what their aspirations are for an end point on that journey. To support these pathways, we'll ensure that there is a comprehensive and diverse calendar of domestic events to provide platforms for individual growth. The core target here then is to establish innovative national pathway models for all disciplines. I'll break this down into what this looks like for athletes and officials and how this links to successful domestic competition and event structure. British Taekwondo will establish national pathway models, which all clubs and coaches will be encouraged to adopt to support the progression of athletes from beginner to elite level across all disciplines of Taekwondo. The syllabuses and progression models will be developed by the newly formed performance departments for each discipline, ensuring that each are tailored and specific. The ambition is for these programmes to be instantly recognised as the national pathway for progression but be flexible enough for individual clubs to tailor as required. Engagement with GB and BT high performance coaches in the development of these programmes will ensure that the teaching methods instilled from the outset support the elite end of the journey for those athletes with the desire and the talent. And at the very end of this journey, we'll look to ensure that there are clear exit strategies available for retiring athletes to be retained within the Taekwondo family. That may be officials as club coaches, volunteers or event organisers, but we want to strive to retain their knowledge and passion within the sport. To complement the athlete pathway models, early next year, an events manager and events officer will be appointed centrally to work with the discipline specific events departments to develop the optimal do domestic competition and event structure for each discipline. 
at the entry level, we'll look to develop an innov innovative events for say the under 10s, quick fire, safe, and most importantly, fun. Beyond entry level, early thoughts are that this might comprise of a regional league structure for sport and Pumse, which supports athlete rankings. For the martial art, this may be structured differently and may include technical masterclass seminars, flagship national festivals, and national demonstration team events. So that new events team will develop event support toolkits and event accreditation tools for each of the disciplines, with the ambition being to raise the standard of all events, increase the number and geographical spread of events, and support event organisers to attract high levels of participation. At that higher end of the pathway, we will ensure that the format for the British Championships results in well-attended, high-profile events which support talent identification and provide inspiration. A growth in domestic competition requires a growth in the number and quality of officials to officiate at the events. So to this end, British Taekwondo will develop and deliver gold standard officials education programmes for sport, Pumse and their para equivalents. The courses, course materials and qualification pathway will be developed centrally, increasing the number of qualified and active officials in all categories across the UK. The new domestic competition structure will go on to provide, we hope, the platform for developing officials to gain experience. With more and more active officials, we hope that officiating at the highest level domestic events will become something that they may look to compete to attain and will therefore also offer a way to recognise and reward those committed individuals. So we're kind of at the central point on the strategy journey and time to focus directly on you, the clubs and coaches who are central to the, to the success of the organisation. Clubs and coaches fundamentally are the essential infrastructure which serves all of those practicing in Taekwondo and therefore the ambition is to provide clubs and coaches with highest quality education and support to grow the network sustainably. So by providing gold standard education, innovative support tools and recognizing and rewarding commitment and quality, BT hopes to ensure that all clubs and coaches feel valued and respected going on to encourage the next generation of volunteers to take the sport forward. The main measurable target for this objective is to decrease the club and club coach attrition rate by 70% by the end of this strategy through education, club support and recognition programmes. British Taekwondo is already progressing the development of level one, two and three club coach education programmes with a view to increasing the number and quality of club coaches nationwide. These programmes will include gold standard course content and assessment procedures for sport, Pumse, martial art and para Taekwondo, with the target having been set to ensure that 100% of club coaches leading sessions are qualified to at least club coach level two and that 100% of assistant coaches and other individuals supporting the delivery of sessions are educated to at least club coach level one as soon as possible, but by March 2025 at the very latest. Supporting this, the development team will look to deliver an annual forum for club coaches, open coaches sessions at the National Centre and drive recruitment to ensure equal growth across the disciplines and across the UK. The obvious addition to increasing the number and quality of coaches is to also ensure the development and rollout of gold standard tutor education programmes across the three levels and across the different disciplines. This will be supported by a tutor education steering group to help recruit and train more lead educators, increase standards at all levels and refine education models. Examiners are the third critical part of the coaching infrastructure and to support the increased levels of participation, we'll need to ensure that the number and quality of examiners keeps pace. Therefore, examiner education courses, materials, and an associated pathway will be developed centrally, broadening the pool of examiners geographically. So as well as supporting coaching within clubs, the importance of supporting clubs themselves to be successful from a business perspective has also been acknowledged. 
As such, BT are already scoping the requirements for a club development portal for launch in 2022. This will include sections on setting up a new club, managing and growing a club, opening satellite clubs, just for example. And in addition to these digital guides, support will be provided through a club workshop programme and a club mentor programme in providing a range of marketing aids and short courses. And the organisation will, of course, use surveys and other insights gathering methodology to keep asking what you require and to monitor use and satisfaction of the products and programmes that are launched. It's acknowledged that if the NGB expects clubs and coaches to be successful and be true ambassadors for the sport and the organisation, that it must ensure that all clubs and coaches feel valued and respected. The aim is to do this generally through better communication and support and an ongoing recognition programme, but specifically by delivering an exceptional end of year celebration on an annual basis, recognising high performing clubs, sharing positive case studies and rewarding longevity of service, growth and competence as a matter of course. Again, surveys will be undertaken on a regular basis to ensure that initiatives are warmly received and relevant and if they're not, then there'll be a process to review and revise. So if British Taekwondo wants to be world leading as per the vision, it must be innovative and it must be focused on growth. The ambition here is simple but bold to be the go to organisation for Taekwondo in the UK. To do this, the organisation must be innovative and must reach the mass market and to achieve this, it must be financially secure and reinvest revenues wisely. In summary, then, we must be visible, we must be wide reaching and financially secure. A key part of this will require digitalization of the organization. So a digital engagement strategy is already underway with the development of a new website, which will serve new audiences, clubs and participants outside of BT and also those already part of BT. Digitalization will enable a much more effective club finder tool to help people find your clubs and more engaging social media campaigns to encourage people to get involved. A new customer relationship management system, which helps to build a better relationship between the organization and its members, improves the level of customer service to clubs and members and increases the efficiency of membership processes is already being scoped. And quite frankly, knowledge is power and the evolution of this strategy and all work streams pertaining to it will be supported by a strong insights resource, capturing data through various forms of research, supporting British Taekwondo to make evidence based and feedback based decisions on the direction in which project projects, programs and services should be taken. And fundamental to the success is to ensure that all these products and services mentioned so far are visible. So to facilitate this, the plan is to uplift resource to support the development and delivery against a marketing and communication strategy. So in addition to the digital means already mentioned, this may include the launch of a national campaign to increase the visibility of Taekwondo, pop up events, presence at sports festivals, showcasing gold standard clubs and such like. The club reach has been identified as a specific area that requires attention. We'll seek to identify areas where clubs are lacking and provide support to target the development of new or satellite clubs in those areas, giving more people the opportunity to easily engage with Taekwondo. I mentioned earlier that the appointment of a spe event specific personnel to support the development of the domestic competition structure. So it will be the responsibility of these appointments to also deliver against a domestic and international major event strategy which covers all the disciplines and which aligns with UK sports supported major event strategy for GB Taekwondo. European and world level events have already been secured for the Olympic sport in the run up to Paris 2024 and aspirations extend to hosting international events across all disciplines and ensuring that domestic championships are delivered to the highest possible standard. From an organisational and club perspective, hosting major events drives awareness, drives membership, enables activation of sponsors, increases reach through broadcasts and live streaming, can be the catalyst for grassroots legacy programmes, 
supports, volunteering opportunities, and can generate a direct cash profit depending on the funding model. So all clearly the revenue generation required to provide the resources to plan, implement and deliver against this strategy will be significant and work is already underway to map out the budget required. Therefore, income strategies which ensure successful revenue generation will be critical. From a commercial perspective, the probable approach will be to appoint a commercial agency to secure long term commercial partners ideally providing cash, but also relevant membership benefits, club support, products and promotional activation. From a membership perspective, the aim is to generate revenue as a result of providing services such as merchandise, tiered membership packages, club promotion products, teaching aids and via events. And from a public sector perspective, by giving confidence to the relevant organisations through performing well against the early ambitions of this strategy, we hope to go on to secure significant investments, which will ultimately support all clubs, coaches and members. So the final objective focuses on the minority that will strive to be successful at an international level. The ambition here is to support British athletes across all disciplines and age categories to win medals at international events. And this ambition also goes beyond athletes and targets international success in terms of event hosting, coaching, officials and securing positions of influence within the International Federation. Again, the tactics to achieve this have been broken down into three key areas. Firstly, just thinking about talented athletes. Our strategy aims to support talented athletes to achieve success on the world stage, both within the British Taekwondo performance system and by aligning with GB Taekwondo to support success on the Olympic and Paralympic stage. In the first instance, we'll establish optimal talent ID strategies and optimal policies for the selection of athletes to compete and maximise success in international sport and Punse age group and in high performance martial art activities. A slightly longer term ambition is to secure funding to enable those athletes selected to travel with British teams outside of the GB Taekwondo system to do so fully funded. We'll upskill the relevant club coaches to performance level methodology via the level three club coach qualification courses across all disciplines. And we will upskill BT performance head coaches for sport and para sport via education sessions aligned with GB Taekwondo's high performance coaches, shadowing opportunities and a mentoring programme. The benefit of athletes competing on home soil has been proven extensively. And as such, we'll specifically target international events across all disciplines to host in the UK, considering what and when will have the most significant performance benefits. We'll continue to promote and upskill talented BT system coaches and martial art instructors with a view to securing World Taekwondo and Cookie One international qualifications and experience, supporting the expansion and knowledge of these coaches and instructors through hosting World Taekwondo coaching and Cookie One instructor education events in the UK. In terms of referees, we'll look to increase the number of qualified and active international referees, supporting and promoting the appointment of British referees to officiate on, on the world stage. And to do this will be a defined pathway and selection process and selected referees will receive logistical and financial support for attending international events. The process will be similar for increasing the number of qualified and active Cookie One examiners. We'll also look to increase the number of qualified and active international para sport and para punse classifiers, engaging with those both within and outside of BT and ensuring a defined selection process. And finally, for this objective is a focus on international relations. So essentially supporting BT officers to secure positions of leadership within World Taekwondo, World Taekwondo Europe Council and committee structure. We'll also strive to support BT referees to secure positions of influence on those referee, referee committees. And where applicable, this strategy will align with GB Taekwondo's UK sport supported international relations strategy. From a martial art perspective, we'll look to host joint venture events and build personal relationships with senior representatives at Cookie One with the ambition to sign a memorandum of understanding to strengthen BT's position as the only cookie one provider in Great Britain. 
So that concludes the overview of the six main objectives for British Taekwondo. I'd just like to finish by looking at the organisation's core values. So whilst in pursuit of achieving the vision, mission and objectives, it is critical to keep the organisation's core values at the heart of everything. The following values, as Eamon said, have been discussed and agreed with numerous people uh, as we've worked along this process. So firstly, integrity. Throughout this whole process, it's been consistently and unanimously agreed that integrity is the key value and the value that should sit at the beating heart of this organisation. Unity. As products and programmes are delivered, these should always be done so in a manner which is collaborative and inclusive. Taekwondo will be stronger if everyone works together and embraces the distinct styles of Taekwondo and levels at which different people wish to practice. Inspiration. Every action, product, event and programme should be inspirational, encouraging personal development to whatever level is right for each individual. And finally, excellence. The role of the central NGB is to empower clubs and coaches to deliver excellence. And we must lead by example by ensuring that excellence is delivered centrally. Fundamentally, that's the aim of what we want to achieve. So I know that was a lot of information. Um, thank you very much for listening. I'm going to hand back to Ian now just to talk you through how this strategy will be launched and implemented, Ian. Thank you, Sam. I'm sure, like everybody else, your uh, your brain's fizzing a little bit. Whilst we're using an awful lot of uh, tech speak that they use in Sport England and local authorities and UK Sport, um, a lot of these things we've we've got to turn into real, tangible differences for for our members and for our clubs. So. We've got to turn all of that into actions. What we're going to do in uh, the next few weeks is we're going to get views from you guys in the wider membership through uh, some surveys. Obviously, we've been through this exercise with board working groups, talking to club leads. We've involved particular um, people who've got specialisms in in areas of either membership or retention or marketing uh, digitization etc cetera, etc cetera, along this journey um, but we want to get the core member feedback if we can in the next few weeks in and around Christmas either just before or just after um, with a view to having the strategy fine-tuned and then summarize it in a proper dig digital publication so yes you know Eamon and Sam have flew, flown through that today <laughs> um, but when it's all written down there's a lot of detail behind it uh, spreadsheets that will make your eyes water with lots of targets and um, KPIs to you again use techno speak but it's great when we all sit around and, and as Taekwondo people, I think we're quite good at that. We, we all sit around and say, we should do this. We should do that. We should do X. And what, if you don't capture it, you don't get it written down. You don't think about how it actually works in the real world, build a strategy around it, then resource it then actually make it um, happen on the ground it's just talk and we we've done that a lot and like i say I'm, I'm i'm one of the world's worst as well i can talk a good story but that's the intention we're going to get all this down we're going to publish it and we're going to launch it in march 2021 and then from 2021 for 2031 i can't believe i'm saying that we absolutely measure the hell out of it um, and hold me and the staff team and, and the growing teams to the wall and say, well, you you said you wouldn't do this and you're going to do that and how you were going to achieve it. So, yes, it's a lot of words, but this is, what, a year, Eamon, in, in the offing. We, we started this process a year ago. 
and we, we you know we're getting to the point now with covid where we've been able to do this behind the scenes and um it's um yeah we're, we're, we're ready to ready to do it thanks ian uh thanks very much sam uh i mean first of all just to re-emphasize um ian's point with a with a 10-year vision with a um, four-year picture and with a one-year operational plan um wrapped around all the activity that that Sam's outlined uh, and Ian's just talked about. Um, as a board and as a chair, it's our responsibility to hold the executive to account for delivery. So uh, that, that means that you as a community uh, can rely and uh, support the organisation to achieve the uh, ambitious plans that we're laying ahead of us. They're ambitious, but we believe they're deliverable. And we really do. And we've got experience from uh, other uh, governing bodies that have achieved. Uh, and we've got our own experience where we have achieved such a lot in the last 12 months. Um, before I wrap up, I just want to, and I know it'll come through the agenda, but the activity that's taken place to um, make appointments to the, that, that voluntary structure that Ian's talked about has been phenomenal in my view uh, during, during a very difficult period. Uh, I've been on many of the panels. Um, some, some of the, um, the recruitment process has been a bit clunky and, and, and I'd apologize if that's come over that way. However, for me uh, to be able to talk directly to people from all over the country during this period and uh, to see the engagement and the excitement and the ambition of those people who you'll see later through the um, presentation has just has just inspired me uh, and the, the board who have been involved in uh, those those recruitments and to see the power of all of those people, all of yourselves behind the organisation and supporting it in those ways in, in what is a voluntary capacity, but I'm sure will turn into uh, a, a significant piece of work for everybody. I, I've just been so motivated. So I'm totally convinced this strategy is deliverable. I'm totally convinced that the work that's been going on has laid really firm foundations for us to deliver that. You'll be the measure of that success. You'll see what we are going to propose during today uh, and through the next year and beyond but uh, we would look forward to your um, your commitment and support of that strategy as as it comes through as Ian said uh, in March so before we move on just a big thank you to Sam I know Sam's not finished her work with us yet um, but tremendous I listened to this a few times and today I've listened again and um, I'm getting clearer and much clearer about our direction so it will take some time for us all to absorb that knowledge and information to go through the slides again to ask questions um, but but fundamentally it's a very very strong framework for us all to work within to achieve our objectives and to support uh, the sport you all love which is really important so big thank you to Sam uh, for all of that work uh, and notwithstanding the fact that Sam has had the support naturally of Ian and the team who have done an amazing amount of work in the background as Ian said, you've seen um, the, the, the top of the iceberg there. A lot of work underpinning this, going into more granular detail, has been developed. Uh, and, and this is the work which we'll push out and get, uh, get your support on over the next one year, three, four years, and then 10 years um, to make sure we deliver that very, very strong vision. So for me, uh, I think it's a, a wrap up of this session. Uh, and I believe we're meeting again uh, on this Zoom at 11 o'clock. So I think we've just got um, a few minutes for you to grab a coffee, get yourself relaxed uh, and get sorted out for the next session. Ian, is that correct? That's, that's correct, Ian. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much, everybody. Um, we'll uh, leave it there for 15 minutes.